Yeah, recording. <laughs> yep. Video. <laughs> Collar's not fixed. So that ruins the whole thing, right? Um, so I sort of had that kind of thing on my mind, what we notice in life and what we fight for and what we are upset by and what disturbs us and you know the whole idea how that's conformed. So it's I suppose related, Professor Anton did a video about some guy who wrote some sort of wacky book that just kind of talks in that kind of jargon about, uh, you know, what kind of person you are, uh, you know, and why, you know, your conditioning, your thought process. Uh, you could even take it to a conversation about what makes a maximum human being. Uh, you know, a Mr. Spock or something. Um, you know, having having programs. This is all programs that um, control your programs, manage them, and optimize them. You know, only let the silly person out. You know, with maybe you know, let all the the frivolous programs loose. Maybe <laughs> all together in some event. You know clown orgy sex and uh, you know segregate things so we're you're not being a jerk when you need to be something else so again this sort of relates to my theme of psychology versus philosophy and uh, even the glib argument that um, you could argue that there's times when you have to um, bend to the seriousness <laughs> of the circumstance and can't just whatever it away uh, you know I'm very good at whatevering things away whatever <laughs> you know just that's the you know I don't want to fight with you I don't care this is stupid fuck you yeah that's what whatever kind of a fixes things it's a fixer um, but there's times when these things need to be dealt with, you know, whatevering Fukushima away, <laughs> you know, it's not a good plan, um, you know, whatevering uh, economic crisis pending, uh, whatevering, whatever the thing is, it's just not, um, so it's a nice for a personal program, but it's not very good for your uh, human being affecting the universe kind of programming. And that's what it always sort of comes down to here, is I'm going to um, say that, you know, instead of looking for the programming that maximizes your um, personal clown orgy sex, uh, you know, agenda, that the um, better agenda of calculating machine can be applied to uh, figuring out things, uh, figuring out plans and strategies to improve things, uh, shore up the building, patch the holes in the boat, you know, that kind of thing. The mission oriented, where the mission isn't, hey, I'm bored, you know, uh, you know, hey, uh, uh, be more funny, uh, you know, I need entertaining, um, you know, those very different agendas there very different life living and, and so you could argue that we're we're all on the same boat right we're you know we have different perspective let's say some of us are in storage and some of us are on deck chairs in the sun but the fact is is that you can say that there's a reality and we're all riding on it we're all navigating it and there's either a, a right way to to do that, you know, um, and there's certainly wrong ways to do it. We probably can agree on some wrong ways, you know, bashing people over the head and stealing their money, probably a wrong way. We could agree, uh, you know, the obvious ones of obvious harm, let's say. Um, but, you know, that then you get into the whole, you know, what's the difference between a terrorist and a revolutionary, you know. The, 25 cents, 250, <laughs> 350. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, not much. Um, so, 
So yeah, back, I think the, you know, I'll go back on the boat metaphor and just say that, you know, some of this philosophy conversation is basically just trying to get us to acknowledge, you know, certain realities of this boat and that um, it doesn't have a captain and it doesn't have a crew and that we, the passengers, <laughs> all right, have to do this shit. There's, the God isn't, even if you believe in one, he's not navigating, he's not doing anything, right? Because he's making it our responsibility, supposedly. But regardless, I, I just think you can accept that theme that God isn't steering. And uh, there's no lookouts. Uh, maybe your prophets, I don't know. If I was to take the metaphor a step further. Um, but the point is, is that we have to navigate the boat. Uh, you know, we as the riders. And we're sitting there saying, you know, some riders are, you know, not my problem. You know, but those are always, there's always people like that who, you know, they'll, they'll lie on the grass you mowed kind of thing. You know, they're just takers. Uh, they, they don't see any obligation. They just have an obligation to themselves and that's all they're going to think about. And unless you can make the crisis, you know, real enough for them, a crisis, a threat, yeah, they're just not going to do anything. And they might even say something silly like, well, I'll be dead before the boat sinks or some other kind of crap. They'll glibly walk past any sense of urgency or importance. And then you have these other people, you know, might be something like a me, um, yeah, who are just penny-pennied all over the place. The sky is fucking falling. The boat is fucking going down. <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of signs in the water, little icebergs, ice cubes. Um, it's just, uh, and, and it's really important that we organize ourselves to make this not horrible. And so that's the other part though, is right? I mean, that's where it all kind of just, damn. I mean, I wish I could say, let's fix it and sail right to the, you know, right into the sunset. Well, there's no sunset to sail into. <laughs> you know, there's just, ew, what an ugly poo. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was just a, happened to be a very ugly poo. A uh, big horse, ugly poo. Looked like a molten planet or something. Anyway, um, really is a dismal, drizzly day. Cold and dank. <sighs> Doesn't really feed the, <laughs> the the leg clowns or whatever the the get up and goer of the body. Anyway, that's, that's sort of the related subject, but not this subject, um, of motivation and, you know, attempting to generate motivation. But anyway, so it's a real motivation killer, you know, when all you're really saying is, look, we have to get ready for the crash with the iceberg so we can die gracefully instead of badly. You know, that's, you know, everybody's just going to go, whatever. Because, yeah, I mean, because they're just not going to, I'm not dying. Uh-uh. Or, um, that doesn't, somehow it just doesn't mean much to them. Um, you know, the, I don't know, I mean, I guess that's just a, a conversational problem. Is, the, is first you have to go into some sort of detail about, well, you know, would you rather take four years to die or two weeks? <laughs> would you rather take two weeks or two hours? Uh, you know, how long would you like it to have toy for you before you die of it? <laughs> yeah, you're going to, inevitably going to be dead. Would you rather have it for two weeks or two days? Yeah, I think that's obvious enough. But I'm just saying, throwing those arguments in the middle of the conversation kind of breaks the narrative. <laughs> yeah, so... They just kind of gloss over and say, look, jellyfish, you know, and so you're all done. Yeah, conversation over. Um, 
yeah, so that's one of the liabilities of boat life is uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. not only do you have to wear the one man band costume, you know, with the cymbals and the band and the drum, uh, you have to do it in clown face, uh, you know, hopping on one foot, um, you know, to keep these lunatics, you know, with their eyes on the ball kind of thing. Uh, anyway, which is frustrating. Um, it's like you have to kill people to get people to read your manifesto. <laughs> yeah, well, gee, that seems a stupid standard. Uh, you know. But apparently that's what it takes. <laughs> this silly world. Anyway. Preposterously silly world. <sighs> anyway. Well, people are. By nature. Okay. Uh, by nature. Uh, selfish, which is silly. So, um, but they just, they, yeah, they just keep needing feeding. The biology keeps um, telling them, I want a better game. <laughs> you know, it is the hunger game in the sense that you're always hungry for something. Uh, you know, fill you up on potato chips and you'll be wanting to fill something else or do something else or you know, it's always something on the list. Another interesting one of these plants with two varieties. You know, the white and the purple. A lot of plants do that, especially with those two colors, which is sort of interesting. You know, either pink or violet. Um, you know. I mean, I, I find it interesting because, you know, I really don't have a... Uh, an explanation. <laughs> but if I was a physicist, I'd assume that the <laughs> flowers are expressing their personality or some other kind of wacky theory. They're reading the Martian's mind and deciding that white's this year's Vogue color. That's what physicists would do. Uh, you know, it's just sort of a joke, a witticism. <laughs> You know, thrown in there because that's what we've learned to do with our lives is, you know, put wit on things and crap and folksiness or some other style shit. Doesn't have anything to do with the boat. <laughs> Doesn't have anything to do with reality. Just has to do with the stupid, funky way human beings have to communicate with each other. How they have to get all friendly and lovey, or they can't have a conversation. They have to like, chew on the same wheat stalk and, and get to know the other guy's heart. Yeah, you know, so they can know each other in our hearts. Yeah, that's what all the <laughs> the gay tumbleweeds do. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, you get my my drift, though. Right, I'm making another, that was another joke, sort of. Another witticism <laughs> intended to, um, you know, sarcastically point out that, you know, people aren't capable of having rational conversation about the boat we're riding, its condition, and where the fuck we're going, which is nowhere. <laughs> yeah, absolutely nowhere. You just won a free trip to absolutely nowhere. Four hundred fifty-eight dollars shipping and taxes. Plus, your boat's gonna sink inevitably. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shit. What a prize! Wow. I'm a big winner. Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so that is kind of another joke. So there, it's just... I'm, I, I'm calling them jokes. I realize they're, <laughs> they're barely in the joke cloud. But uh, whatever. Uh, attempted jokes. Um... Near joke. Yeah, they call it a near joke. Yeah. 
So anyway, oh, you can see the drizzle, 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 drizzle. Yeah. I keep thinking of reflectivity now because I'm not this quanta shit. But anyway, uh, so yeah, I'll remain the the boat passenger who recognizes there's models running in my head of you know boat going to port disassembling <laughs> and just saying don't ever do that again that was a bad idea or there's the boat crash into iceberg yell yell scream scream cry cry freeze freeze glub glub horror horror uh, and I'm saying hook you know let's not do that glub glub horror horror thing uh, let's just rationally turn this baby around and get the hell out of this voyage nowhere shit. This ain't a good business to be in. Yeah. That's the better narrative. Uh, I don't feel up to this today. <laughs> I have a lot of days where I really don't feel like being here. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Put on the Mr. Spock program. Calculate logically. Do your function. Complete your task. And go home and take a nappy. Yeah. That's what I'll do.